Good evening. This is Ken Long from Tortoise Capital with a review of charts of interest for the weekend report of June 4th, 2011. I'm trying a little experiment here with the percent price oscillator with the settings 10, 20, and 8 in lieu of uh, MACD histogram. The, the indicator is formed basically the same, but now instead of an absolute value, it uses a percent uh, price difference between the fast and slow moving averages gives you roughly the same uh, indicator as the MACD histogram only now it can be compared against other instruments uh, on a relative basis and against itself over time if you're looking back longer periods of time because it's scored on a percentage and not on uh, absolute dollars uh, so we're going to take a look at the at the usual charts uh, again, and what I want to highlight this time is the location within the recent trading range of about the past month, in some cases a little longer, so we can just see where the uh, winners are uh, in terms of their uh, price positioning in the channel uh, while we've been in this sideways-ish uh, market. So Alcoa has come all the way back from 18 down to 16. That's a triple bottom that it's testing here that's a you know about an 11% move uh, from that swing high uh, which has given up more than the market has given up so uh, I like Alco at 16 if it can hold uh, then we have a clear 11% uh, channel with two dollars uh, to work to work with here uh, Boeing has uh, it broke down below its 50 and its 20 day moving average and closed uh, around 75 you can see that violates the last 30-day channel ending with the doji and um, you know if it if it fails through 74 uh, next stop is 70 in the previous swing low caterpillar in about the same kind of condition at the bottom end of its recent channel and then over the last 30 days it's pulled back quite a bit 15 percent uh, Cisco continues to disappoint in sec in the, in the tech sector um, down at 16 uh, it's got to get through 17 to break out of this yellow trading zone and get above its 50-day uh, moving average, and then the test of 18 would be would follow. But right now it's pretty disappointing. Chevron um, uh, disappointing compared to oil and energy, uh, but it's holding support at uh, 100, and so you have about a 6% channel to work with. Uh, DBA and uh, DBC you can see are quite different. Uh, than what we've looked at so far. The commodities have, have actually done better with DBC having a nice bounce and resting at 30, which is right below its 50-day moving average. Uh, if it gets through 30, then uh, next stop is 32 and, and a previous uh, swing high test. Uh, DBA is at the top of its trading range from 32 to 33, very tight. Um, there's been some one-day tradable ranges in here, uh, but we really got to see it get north of uh, 33 and a half before we can think about it getting to 35. A tale of two indexes overseas. Uh, EFA, you can see, uh, has closed back at its 50-day moving average, whereas EPP, Asia less Japan, is at the bottom of its trading range uh, between 47 and 50. So the um, uh, developed world outside the U.S. has an advantage over the uh, relatively emerging markets of, G of Asia. Uh, this week, EFA actually did better than SPY, has moved ahead of it in the ETF2 database, too. So that's another reason to pay attention to EFA. Uh, Brazil, doing better than the U.S., closed at the top end of its trading range, gets through 76. Then the next target will be uh, 80. And uh, you can see Brazil is uh, marginally better than ILF, its Latin American counterpart. Uh, so there's more strength in Brazil than there is in Latin America, but both of those are looking better than SPY, as an example. Um, Hewlett Packard uh, has slid back to the bottom of its uh, trading range between 35 and a half and uh, 38, and uh, that's been very tradable. You can see the um, the previous oscillation here was giving orderly moves up and orderly moves down. Uh, lots of doji, so not a lot of follow-through, but certainly tradable on a swing and an intraday basis. Uh, Intel has just uh, disappointed everybody and pulled back from 24 back to 22, about a 9% uh, pullback, resting right on its 50. It's got to hold 22 um, 
Otherwise, uh, it's a retest of closing the gap to get back, and it gets back to 20. Uh, Russell Midcaps absolutely disappointing, uh, all the way back to uh, to uh, 81, and um, and so that's uh, uh, almost a 10 percent pullback from this swing high at uh, 87. Um, you can see how much um, bullish or a bearish movement there was in the uh, last three days, especially uh, last Wednesday. Johnson & Johnson, one of the uh, strength leaders in the Dow and uh, U.S. markets with consumer staples, is holding above the 20. The slope of the 50 is very favorable. It's at the top end of its trading range. But again, even a leader like Johnson & Johnson is showing a little bit of uh, vulnerability. Uh, and I would say the same with uh, Kraft, Coca-Cola, and McDonald's uh, to an even greater extent. Kraft looks very vulnerable at 34. Uh, if it can hold, though, it's a retest of 36. But if a failure here, it get back, gets back to 33 and 32 in a hurry. Uh, Coca-Cola has already failed that test and made a new 30-day low. And although it had been pre uh, previously very strong, it's uh, showing uh, significant signs of weakness. Even McDonald's, which had as, about as straight a line as you could want from uh, 76 to 83, uh, has been backsliding after a five-day down, uh, gap down, and we get did get a white candle on Friday. So I like it if it gets through 81, but I really want to see the rest of the market getting strong before I just automatically pile back into McDonald's. But definitely tradable. The uh, uh, volatility has been good enough to trade intraday, uh, so that should be on your short list as a strength leader. What we have here is a classic triple screen setup. Powerful trend up. A uh, measured pullback uh, with a close below the 20 period moving average. You can see on the PPO indicator that it's uh, well below the zero line, and so some hesitation or uh, support here will cause that to uptick pretty quick. MDY had been the strongest of the U.S. sectors, but it made a new 30 day low uh, down to 174. With a uh, with a tail that indicates failure, that shadow above the real body is uh, is a bearish sign, and uh, you can see it's retesting the support at 174 from two months ago. Fails through there and uh, look out below. Uh, we got to remember this was the week that um, the U.S. markets got measurably weaker compared to the rest of the developed world, and so MDY, which had been the strongest of the U.S. sectors, has really uh, not been able to maintain. Microsoft continues to disappoint, testing the swing low at 24, failure below here, and it's off the chart and failing. Um, PPO is rolled over, and the cross, and that's actually an indicator of uh, uh, failure below 24 can be immediately shorted. Uh, Silver had, has had one little favorable bounce up uh, off the consolidation zone here north of 32.5, held support at the 20, uh, but it's got to get back through the 50, and... Um, it, it is uh, this pullback is only a 50% retracement off its last set of gains, so uh, silver is not to be written off yet. Uh, oil about the same as silver, really. Um, you could almost superimpose those charts. It, it held at the 20, had an up day on uh, Friday, and held support from Thursday's low, as you can see. Um, uh, rising oil price is not going to help anybody. Um, Walmart at, uh, has failed from 57 back to 53, about an 8% pullback, hovering right at its 50-day moving average, uh, increasing volume. Um, so that could be either a changing of the guard or people buying value in a, in a Staples leader. Um, uh, looking at the, at the XL series, basic materials back to test a triple bottom at 38 um, with a trading range up to 41 but it's got to get through the 20 and the 50, a lot of resistance overhead. Uh, energy sector benefited from uh, Friday's uh, favorable price action in oil, uh, but still a ways to go before it can get through the 50-day moving average and then back up to 81. XLF financials had just been horrible, uh, made a new 30-day low, um, and although it closed a white candle, any Failure below 15 and a quarter uh, can be shorted immediately. Um, XLI and XLK both closing in near their 30-day lows. Um, not looking good at all. XLP, which had been uh, 
as straight as straight can be has failed through the 20 and now the 50 closing in a doji a break below 31 uh, would be devastating to the US market because this is the last sector that's really had any kind of strength and uh, its weakness is really uh, what tipped the scale against SPY uh, to, to uh, fall below EFA this week. Uh, XLU, the f uh, defensive sector, even that's having trouble holding up, as is healthcare, closing in the bottom of their 10 day trading ranges. Both are still above their 50 moving average, 50 day moving average, but uh, even the de strong defensive sectors are looking weak. Uh, consumer discretionary, you can see that's even worse than uh, consumer staples above it as it's already violated its 50. And then Exxon Mobil bringing up the, t the tail here, the uh, an energy sector company that has not held up as well as uh, oil um, as it's back testing its uh, triple bottom here at 80. So those are the charts of interest for June 4th. Uh, pretty gloomy. Uh, however, if the market does manage to hold here, there's a lot of favorable channeling type trades that, that are going to become available. And I'd be, again, looking at the strength leaders like uh, Consumer Staples, Johnson & Johnson, Kraft, McDonald's all come to mind, and uh, XLP, the sector spider. Uh, but failure can be, uh, uh, can be shorted and, uh, and piled on with intraday uh, trading as we're only now just uh, a few percentage points away from uh, leaving the bull market and getting into a sideways by our market classification definition. So keep your powder dry and risk measured. This is Ken Long for Tortoise Capital. Have a good weekend.